We'll start with an opening statement from Coach, and then we'll open it up to any questions. Congratulations to Creighton. Good team. Really uh, strong going forward, and they showed their quality in the first half. Scoring the three goals. Right back in, it's McGuire. Oh, he's got a rocket shot. The man can score, and he's got 22 goals. And another goal, and the answer there from Castro. They're looking to add one here. Late, and they do. Yes, wow. Oh, my goodness. What a rocket shot for the Blue Jays, and they lead it 3-1. to one. I thought our guys dug in. Second half, we dominated. Normal procedure that when you're down two goals, that we're going to put a lot of men forward and um, try to get one goal back at a time. You know, they were going to sit in and make it very difficult for us and get men behind the ball, and we just couldn't get that elusive third goal to to take it to overtime. So it's a tough pill to swallow. Can you talk to us about this second goal? The ending of a season springs new beginnings, new opportunities to fully bloom. Last year we had, you know, one of, you know, a great season altogether. Regular season, conference champions, you know, un go undefeated, ACC. Just a very successful season uh, overall and, and, you know, it was a great, great time, you know, to go through it together as a group. And so I think uh, we came back the next year with a real chip on our shoulder but real confidence in that if we stick to the process, if we work, if we stay together, we have the talent to, to really uh, have a really, really strong campaign, and turns out we did. We knew we had something special brewing, and it was just a matter of time before we worked out all the kinks to see them flourish and progress, and that's where we are now. And Muhammad delivers, 1-0, Blue Devils up. I think a lot of players consider Duke for obvious reasons where the Duke kind of mantra is that you're gonna have a world-class education, number one, first and foremost, and we take it seriously. And it's cool in our team to study and take uh, academics seriously. And I think that's understood and, and we make that a priority throughout the program every single day. And then I think also the possibilities of taking their game to another level, even if you're not left looking to go pro, but you wanna get better. And I feel that our players do get better from when they come in. They're young boys and anxious to learn. And uh, by the end of their four years experience, they're, they're men and ready to conquer the world whenever department they choose. It's all about excellence. So it's a challenge. You know, we, not everybody can handle it because there are demands of your time. You're expected to perform, but we've found that the, the quality of you know, student athlete that, that we deal with, if we keep raising the bar, <clears throat> they keep reaching that because it, it's in their DNA to, to strive and to want to get better and to improve. And I think we've done a really good job of bringing in really high character quality guys into our program. Our program right now is in such a good, good position and we have fantastic kids on our team and the culture is really player driven and we're all in it together and everybody's pulling in the same direction and everybody really cares about the su success of their teammates. So. I think the, the family atmosphere is really what helps motivate and drive guys towards Duke. We also wanted soccer junkies. We wanted guys that loved the game, that wanted to train, that wanted to get better, that you know had eyes on the pros. And for us, I think that's what we targeted. We wanted to get the more of the Peter Strouds and the Shacks involved that really knew that eventually they wanted to be pros. And uh, I think that changed a lot and also getting uh, good, upstanding young men that are going to contribute into the communities, not just for the team, for example. And they understand how much we're going to push them and, and make them a better player and get out of the comfort zone and knock down those barriers that they put up and say, we're going to get to the bottom of it and we're going to make you rise and allow you to be the best version of you you can be. First, Shaq's an amazing person, and 
His smile will light up the room and it's so fun just getting to work with him every day and, and see him come to training. And we've never seen a guy work as hard as he did in training day in and day out. It's like his life was depending on it and he just loves the game so much and that was just very evident and, and what you saw in his play. Being able to just be around that and witness that was, as a coach was, was amazing. Yeah, but the number two overall selection in the 2023 MLS Super Draft, Orlando City take a forward and generation Adidas signing out of Duke, Shaq Muhammad. I mean, this is amazing. You know, this is literally a dream come true moment for me. He's going to have a big career. He's so talented and he's so full of life. He loves living. He loves playing football. He loves being around the game. He loves being around people who love the game. He's infectious. So he was a huge, huge part of our locker room and our training. Put Luke Thomas in. It's back to Shaq. Another give and go. His career hasn't got off to the start that he wants it so far, but I know it's a matter of time and he's young too. He's still only 19 and we got him to come to Duke a year early. So he's still got to mature a little bit more and get a little bit stronger physically, but no question in my mind, well, he'll be a star in the MLS. Peter Strand, uh, what a character. We saw him playing obviously a couple of years before he arrived at Duke. And uh, the one thing we loved about him was his bite. You know, a lot of players like the fun side of the game when when your team's in possession. You know, when you when you can dribble somebody or shoot or score. Peter really wanted to make a, a difference in every aspect of the game, attacking, defending, whatever it was. He he was just committed to to, to being a warrior in in every facet. He really led by example. He, he was such a vital part of our, our team and uh, the success that, that we have had. And it's great seeing that he's starting for the Red Bull right now in the summer and knowing that's been his goal for a long, long time. And we're big fans of his and he makes us smile. Whenever you see, say Peter Stroud's name, you smile. With the fourth pick in the 2022 MLS Super Draft, Houston Dynamo FC selects from Duke University, Thor Ulfars. I'm just so excited to join this club and uh, I just wanted to thank my family, my friends, coaches, staff, players, everyone that's been a part of my journey and uh, it's been hard work but it's finally paying off and just ready to go to work again. Ulfarsen, Ulfarsen with the finish and that should do it here at Koskinen. Thor, I mean, he made a big impact in a short period of time, came in at a difficult time during COVID. He came here and didn't get off to the best of starts. It was a little bit of a difficult period in his life, and he came in and he didn't allow his personality to come out right away, and it kind of showed in, in his productivity. He didn't have a great first campaign. Something changed, and the real Thor came out. And the real Thor is a very confident young man who believes in himself and wants to take responsibility on his shoulders. He wants to take every free kick. He wants to take penalties. He wants to be the guy that, you know, has the, the final shot in the last second to win a game. And he backed it up. It takes a deflection, it goes in. The prep touch right there, setting up his left foot. He was the best finisher that, that I've seen and that I've been able to coach. In the header, clinical on the finish. He really had a big impact on the program in the short time he was here. Obviously, he's having a great experience now with Houston and doing great, and we're very happy for him. Ian was always a talent. In fact, uh, he came to our camp when he was a rising sophomore in high school, and uh, he was also with the residency program with the national team and he had undoubted talent, physical attributes, could play left-footed, great physique, and could really run. And the question mark was his mentality. His maturity level really improved while he was here, and he grew up quite a bit. Again, another description of coming from a boy to a man is a great description of his progress. And a goal off the cross! 
he's done unbelievably well transitioning from this environment to the pro environment and obviously something has has uh, clicked a little bit with him because he's he's getting major minutes he's starting in the middle of the back at times and left center back at times for a team that's i think maybe top of the league right now so we're so proud of him we're so happy for him and he deserves it he's a really really talented young man and so likable one of the most liked young men on the team he was a vital part of, of our, our success there and obviously that success in, in college uh, helped lead him to get drafted fc cincinnati selects from duke university ian murphy we're, we're very excited about the things he's doing in the mls jeremy you know, as another one of these guys that has this just amazing self-belief, and and rightly so, because he's so talented, he's strong, he's athletic, um, he's technically really clean, he can see things, he can execute. He has matured a great deal as a person, and uh, we talk regularly and really proud of how well he's taken his game on a consistent level in the MLS. And, and uh, you could see that as a recruit when he was coming in and led the league in the development academy for two years in a row with scoring and what a talent and what an eye for goal and knows his way around the box and can finish. Really thought that he might have taken a dip too early to go to the MLS, but he's made the right decision and, and uh, he's proved everyone that might have doubted him, me included to an extent, that uh, he's the real deal and uh, he's transitioned to the program flawlessly and I hope he continues. and gets a shot with the national team as we go forward. I think Brian White's one of those guys that absolutely loved Duke and he loved the program. He was getting treatment, even though he didn't need treatment. He was always in and around the locker room, always on the field doing extra, getting there early, working on his game. You know, initially he was like a wing player, wide player. I played him at right back. And so we moved him a little bit higher and, you know, just over time he matured and and he worked on his game. I mean, he's one of the individuals that continually got better. And Coach Brady and him in particular worked on his finishing on a daily basis. So it's no surprise to us how well he's doing in the MLS for Vancouver now. He did great for the Red Bull as well. Turning into the box, White tries to blast one and scores! Top shelf and another goal! Hopefully uh, he continues to score those goals and gets the notoriety that he deserves. He's a wonderful human being and love being around him just a quality human being just it was always with him it was always about what he could do for the team for the program not about what he wanted and what he needed just a joy to work with and we're so so happy and so proud of him and for him yeah Sean it was amazing he was a Pretty big time recruit. Uh, people saw it, and we we worked hard to get him, and we were really happy when we did get him. I think one of the most significant memories I have of him was early in the season, and maybe his second season. He got a bad injury on his, uh, I think, his right ankle. But at training every day, he had a ball, and he was juggling the ball with his left foot. He was sitting down, but literally for two hours of training, every time he'd look over, he's sitting there because he he can't run or do anything. And he, it was like manic. It was like, give it a break, God's sake. But it paid off. His left foot became more than serviceable. And, and that's who he is. He's disciplined. He sees what he needs to do. He sets a goal. And he, and he does the work required to achieve that goal. And what he's done in the game up to this point is phenomenal. And he deserves it. He's such a hardworking, honest, team-orientated kind of guy. A real, real Duke guy right there. And I feel that Duke was a really good spot for him off the field as well as on the field. He learned a lot about leadership. And he told me that if he didn't go to Duke for four years, he wouldn't be the leader that he is now. Really proud of him, talked to him on a regular basis and uh, can't do enough for Duke soccer and Duke in particular. And we're really proud of how well he's developed as a young human being. And he'll be a leader off the field at some point, whether a GM or wherever he lands, he's gonna be a real focus. He could run for Senate. I could see him doing that in New Jersey. He's a top, top human being.
Seb was a monster athlete, and I remember Dr. Kevin White, the AD at the time, said, where did you get this guy? And in fact, I coached his older brother here at Duke when I first arrived. He was already here, Christian. But Seb was a, a terrific talent. You know, I kept working with him and asked him to keep building his game. Don't be just one dimensional. Build your left foot as good as your right foot like Sean Davis did. They played together. Really proud of how his career went. He started off abroad and played in Scandinavia with a couple teams there and then get back to the United States and played in the USL, became the Defender of the Year and then got a shot in the MLS. And he won a MLS championship two years ago with New York City FC, last year with L M uh, LAFC. And now he got traded and got a big contract with Dallas. Just got married. So life's really good for him. I saw him play against Sean Davis about a month ago and was able to have a drink with him after the game. And we had a great time. And um, I think maybe in his uh, future could be uh, coaching. He liked to get into coaching. And I said, anytime you're ready, come back to Duke and help us out because he has a lot to offer. He's always got a great demeanor, a real professional, uh, fun to be around. And um, yeah, I love that guy as well. He's doing great. We got a big day today, first day. Exciting stuff to start off with. Came from rock bottom, no wrestling move. Man should have known the contest is you. I don't want to hear man running up talking and start claiming it's in just you fool. No, I don't want to hear that ever. When I read down with morning cold weather. Top farmer, I'll bring gold from a cellar. Ain't no debate, I was chosen my brother. I know them man don't like each other. It's the hatred for me when I'm rolling together. Listen to them see the pepper on mine, so they ain't gonna lie when I draw for the pepper. They must have thought that I came from games, but this one here is an awful level. Them man there trying to double up change, I don't know about that. I'm trying to more than trouble. It's like they didn't see what I have done for the mud man came from nothing. Them man ain't hungry like I am. Look, I'm always sure I get more grubbing. I had my heart broken, I can't lie, man. And that pain is disgusting. Performance on the streets is high, damn. And I ain't doing no it's like they didn't see what I have done from the mud man came from nothing. The man ain't hungry like I am. Look, I'm always trying to get more grubbing. I had my heart broken, I can't lie, man. And that pain is disgusting. Performance on the streets is high. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there's lots of excitement around the program right now with the players that are coming back and also the players that we've added. And uh, it's going to be a job for all of us, not just us coaches, to integrate all the new players into our system. And we feel that we've done a really good job with the recruiting process, benefited from the, uh, the transfer portal as well, some grad students, three grad students coming in. Um, so we feel that, you know, we're on the right track with some experience. We have a lot of seniors that have played probably 60, 70 games so far. We have done well the past couple of years, but we haven't won the ACC championship. We haven't won the national championship. We haven't been to the final four. So all those things are our goals. I know who you are. This is what we want and hopefully hoist that trophy at, you know, at the end of the season. I see you right there. As long as we're together and we're all on the same page with the talent we have, we, we have a chance. Going into the season, we've got some goals that we want to achieve. We'll not be happy until we achieve those. That culture, that hunger is already embedded in us, and we're ready to go. We know that every single game that we're going into is going to be a challenge, it's going to be a battle. This season, we know that we are capable of winning the ACC Championship. And they've done it! We were chasing big goals, you know. It's a great time to be a Blue Devil. And dance with the devil.